In May of 2011, Wisconsin lost a brilliant horticulturist. The talented, artistic owner of Mayflower Greenhouse in Hobart, Wisconsin, Jan Vos. Welcome to the Wisconsin Gardener. I'm Shelley Ryan, and today we're going to celebrate Jan's life and his incredible influence on gardeners throughout Wisconsin. Jan was a frequent guest on the Wisconsin Gardener, and there's a reason for that. He was charismatic, creative in his use of plants, colors, and even containers, and he was just plain fun. We're going to share some of our favorite segments today. Jan could turn junk into high fashion container gardens and love showing others how to plant their own junk. He also planted with flowers, even to the point of planting them in picture frames and hanging them on the wall. True living art. In one of my favorite segments, Plants That Go With Wine and Chocolate, Jan shows off some wonderful color combinations in containers and a very thorough knowledge of wine. Throughout the program, we'll talk with other gardeners who continue to carry on Jan's legacy in the garden. It's all coming up on The Wisconsin Gardener. Funding for The Wisconsin Gardener is provided in part by the Wisconsin Master Gardener Association. We're in the middle of a very special greenhouse. This is Mayflower Greenhouse in Green Bay, and I'm with the owner, Jan Vos. And Jan received his master's in floriculture from Poland. Yes, and indeed, yeah. You're, you're kind of famous in these parts for using unusual containers. In yeah, we, we kind of create our own market with the, with the container gardening, and we're, using, we're trying to use very different, unusual uh, type of containers. Our policy is uh, if it doesn't move, Plant it. If it moves, <laughs> plant it anyway, but make it fast. Then I better start moving. Well, and, and I've heard you've planted some, some very strange things. You mentioned a golf bag. Yes, we've done a few bag. golf bags, uh, swings, chairs, uh, kitchen sinks, uh, suitcases, uh, broken bird baths, uh, bases, anything you, you name it, just the imagination. Uh, it's unlimited. Well, then I'm going to name it. You said suitcase. I don't believe it. Make this pretty. Oh, yeah, we will. <laughs> we will. First, uh, what you need is to, you need to make a, a drainage holes. Otherwise, uh, uh, problems, uh, will be a problems with the, with the plants a little bit later. So we just simply drill this suitcase and uh, we'll be using a high porosity mix. Okay. It has excellent uh, proportion between um, Oh. The air and the water, very and this light is soil. very, very important. It's a composted bark, perlite, vermiculite, uh, some wetting agents. So use good stuff. Absolutely, basically. absolutely. Okay. And uh, create your container basically uh, based on uh, contrast. Use colors, uh, use contrast, like look at this, for instance, trailing uh, black colias with those beautiful oh, uh, chartreuse that. edges. Instant effect. Right there, yeah. Amazing. It's yes, beautiful. Yes, indeed, yeah. Uh, same with uh, with uh, this uh, pair of those plants it works perfectly. I don't think it would work right here because it basically they're disappears. The same, but they're beautiful. So let's get going. Uh, what I like to do is first uh, plant. I call it planted dry. Okay. Uh, you can you basically plant your put your plants uh, together, and if you like it, good. If not, well, change it. Okay. So we started right here. You have this black magic colocasia excellent contrast uh, with those those uh, plants we can start putting right here this black trailing colias so I this said. is going to trail over the absolutely. edge absolutely okay uh, right here echoing it's the newest what plant on the market silver falls dihondra that's beautiful of course we are planting container for full sun okay so, so this, everything this, is full sun absolutely okay and right now you have the echoing uh, let's break this a little bit right here with so this grass Right away, Beautiful. you have a really, a really nice effect. So uh, we're also contrasting. We've got very thin, upright leaves. We have broad, flat leaves, and then the more delicate. Yes, so absolutely. don't plant all the same thing. Absolutely. Otherwise, it basically will disappear. Okay. Will disappear. And okay. this, uh, using texture, different texture, different colors, you will make it more dramatic, and they're really very, very highly visible. Uh, we needed some trailing. We have an upright, so now we need a trailing little thing. And of course, would be kind of nice to to echo again. Uh, so we'll use this purple lady irisina with uh, with this. It is really nice plant. We can uh, put this right here for the echoing, or just think, stick it right 
right here and it will work also very nice. Uh, we add this colangio right here and uh, basically containers is, is done. You know what's nice is that you can rearrange. You can say, gee, I don't like that here and you could if, move it and go, oh, absolutely. gee, it looks better this absolutely. way. It's a good idea. This is, this is the, because if you'll plant it uh, moving around, uh, breaking roots and stuff like that, it's a little bit too much. Mm -hmm. Here you are. I here, like your here. approach. Excellent. Here, here, you, here you go. <laughs> this was the finishing touch that this, this container needed. Oh, good. I can get credit right for this now, one, huh? Absolutely. <laughs> right now we can put uh, slow-release fertilize. It's a fertilized Asmo code that uh, every time you water, you feed your plants. Sure. And uh, you will never over overdo. You will never over-fertilize. So, so it's fertilizer. very safe, uh, slow-release fertilize. And you said full sun, so I'm going to be watering at least once a day, I assume. Absolutely. Because the container is kind of small. So if you could use a as big containers as possible. Okay, of so course, a bigger suitcase. <laughs> absolutely. Of course, we slightly overdid this container, but let's say party is tomorrow, so oh, you need sure. an instant effect. Okay. Otherwise, either uh, plant it a little bit farther apart or use a knife okay, to, 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 to trim, it out. Trim, uh, trim down. How did you end up in Wisconsin after training in Poland, by the way? Uh, several years ago, I was on an exchange program and uh, came to, to Green Bay uh, and uh, made several good, good friends, and uh, here I am. Well, I'm delighted, and I have a feeling the luggage Thank companies you. are too. I mean, look at this one. You know? Yeah, it's a little bit different. Yes, this time we created a little bit different color, not as aggressive as the red one. But again, we use this beautiful trailing beautiful. Uh, black colias. We use this is a really wonderful um, lindneria that that stays blooming like that whole summer. Look at this beautiful like soft that. tweedia with the gora with the silver uh, things and of wow. course we could not forget my jewels of Omar. <laughs> <laughs> well you know Jan you've made me look at the junk lane around my house in a whole new light I think I have some planting to do and if you don't mind we're going to take a tour of some of the other beautiful containers you've got. Absolutely done. absolutely good thing about container gardening is if you don't like it in one spot move, move it. it. Especially a suitcase. Here you go. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. That was the first time I worked with Jan, and it was 105 degrees in the greenhouse. I'm with Joe Van Beek. Joe was here also that day, and you worked with Jan and your friend of Jan's. You helped coin the famous phrase we just heard. I did. Um, Jan would say, if it doesn't move, plant it, and I'd say, and if it does, plant it fast. So we went into the, got into the bicycles and the cars and, and different things. Anything that moved. Uh, anything that moves. And with Jan, um, his vision here and his legacy here was to be, give us a European style and to be creative and different. And beyond that went junk. And he brought in junk literally um, from Europe, from his home, and we planted everything we can. And, and he made junk a thing of beauty like who this. Who would think a wing back, a wing back chair, uh, which is now someone's valuable piece of art. Well, and you've got, I mean, things like this were transformed here. We have a truck that all you need to do is uh, drill a hole in it, and if you want to keep it completely intact, set it beside another piece of junk or another planting in the yard. And his legacy continues. It does continue. All of us here uh, look at junk. We think of Jan when we're driving by, and our whole purpose is to be creative, have a vision, and you can do whatever you want it to be. And this is one example. And carry on with the and planting carry on of junk. With Jan's legacy. Thanks. You're welcome. Next up, another example of how Jan continued to break rules. I always said gardening was a form of art. Now I've got proof. Isn't this beautiful? We're at Mayflower Greenhouse in Green Bay, and I'm with the owner, Jan Vos. Uh, Jan, you're an artist. Well, I don't know about that. Anybody can do it. Oh, well, prove Especially it. Especially if we'll <laughs> show it, if you'll show how to. Very simple. Uh, good reason to go to the garage sales or oh, yeah. thrift shops. First, you have to start with a good frame. Okay. Well, not necessarily a good frame that you like. Something pretty. Something pretty that will fit your garden decor and something like that. And uh, uh, Do you recommend doing anything to waterproof it uh, if it's going to be... The best thing would be probably use this varnish uh, in a spray. Just uh, put one thing. or Yes, one or two coats and uh, you're good to go because you're dealing with the water all the time. So you need to waterproof it. Uh, prove it. Uh, then then you've got attach the chicken, chicken wire. wire. Okay. Nothing else. Uh, use staples or nails. And uh, just stapled it just in? Just stapled oh, with yeah, a little okay. staple gun okay. and uh, you're good to go. Second step would be make yourself a box for the, for the, to hold the plants, to hold the plants. And uh, depends how do you want to display it. If it's going to hang this way, uh, 
drainage holes have to be done this right here. So you if you this. have it like this, so then this is where you have your drainage holes. So whichever way you think it's going to lay, you need holes not you in the back of it, but on the, in the bottom because of it. Because a frame will be either hanging or standing on an easel, so it's always water goes down and they need to have a, okay. a room to, 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 to drain. Then Any kind of wood? I would green treated would be probably the best because this okay. way you'll extend the yes okay. you'll the your, your creation will last not forever but very long time. Could I do it with a plastic box if I found one or an old Tupperware, cigar box? Tupperware, Tupperware or something? anything anything goes. Okay. Just your imagination. Cool. Make sure that that this frame uh, will be thick enough to hold uh, enough soil. Okay, it's going to have some weight in it. Ex absolutely, okay. because. We're dealing with the succulents. They don't need too much moisture, too much water, but still they some. need to have some soil okay. and uh, water as well. And then attach this, this frame with uh, like five eighths uh, screws to the frame. Okay, with these little L brackets. L brackets, and you can get them um, any 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 hardware store, and uh, same with the with the screws, okay. and now you're good to go. You've got one started over there. We have there. one that is already started. Explain me the stick in the middle. We will be doing a little tree. Like oh, you, like okay. you showed before, what you do? Take a branch, uh, a drill twig, the, twig dr drill the holes, use the wire, and with this wire you Just attach wire to the chicken the mesh. Yes. Okay. And next step would be your uh, soil to to put into the box. Normally, you plant succulents in a soil that has a sand more, in it, yeah. more sandy. In this case, we don't recommend. And, and why? Uh, it, it holds moisture better and it works just a lot better for the for the plants than than uh, uh, soil with the sand would work. I suppose it also helps keep the plants in here and in the sand here, yes. they might fall out. Yes, normally we do not recommend to press the soil in your container, mm -hmm. but in this case uh, you have to press it a little bit. Again, uh, you don't want, <laughs> want it to fall out. Exactly. Okay. You don't want to, to, to have it like concrete, but, but you still need to, to cover the the f uh, chicken mesh that uh, will hold your plants in a spot. If it's too much, just simply brush it off okay. and uh, you're good to go. Uh, so we now could, we paint with plants. And uh, you have uh, many options. If frame is small, you should use a uh, small, small growing plants. If frame is big, you can use even like this mesembrantum that, that you have uh, additional bonus, beautiful flowers. Sure. Uh, with the big, then bigger frames, then bigger uh, plants you can afford. Get carried away. Yes. And uh, let's create that tree uh, that we could use, for instance, those very attractive uh, cobweb. Uh, yeah, that's pretty. Chicks. Mm -hmm. But we want to, with the gold, we want to go with the gold background. So this is kind of washed out. It does not have enough contrast you want that we that want. Pops. Absolutely. So let's do the regular uh, hen and chicks. That's it's all also perennial. And to make a oh, little look hole. At the, yeah, look at the, the more contrast. Right away. Good uh, idea. The okay. right picture is very, you very live. Okay. Very live. If you could help me, I, sure. I, would, I would very much appreciate that. Teamwork, yes. And uh, planting those, um, make sure that... Uh, so these are just going to root too, just uh, very yes. easily. And they are going to grow as well. So you need to leave a space between the plants. Okay. Otherwise, uh, in the middle of the season, something like that, you basically leave because it already started root, so, so it will not take too much time and it will be very well, very well rooted. But as I said, you need to give them a space to grow. Otherwise, in the middle of the season, you would have to probably thin it out sure. otherwise, and otherwise you don't do that. it would be too much and uh, it will not look too good then uh, go around and uh, create this uh, background okay what about winter care for something like this very simple if you want to store it over the winter just simply um, uh, take the frame off unscrew those screws and uh, hold your uh, your plants in a somewhere in a like cold garage or oh, somewhere really? that okay. that uh, that will that will stay alive for the the till next uh, next spring next spring you might want to just simply uh, cut a little bit if cut down a little bit if it's necessary and you're good to go again i love it so you just keep adding to this now you do a base and you end up back with something like this gorgeous finished product i got to show this one more time and uh, if plants are getting too glo too big, uh, basically pruners, scissors, and pinch them, uh, pinch them back. And then more you pinch, then more dense they will be. And uh, this is your painting. This is absolutely gorgeous. Thank I can't you. wait to try something like this. You truly are an artist. Thank you, Jan. Thank you. This segment caught on like wildfire. So many people were excited to learn how to paint with flowers in a picture frame.
I am with Lisa Janson of Sturgeon Bay, and you also became a plant painter. I, I did. I have many of the picture frames in my gardens, as do other gardeners up in Door County, and there stands a very special one at the garden door the Master Gardeners did in memory of him. Which is very special, because that was just, again, one of his unique techniques that spread all over the place. It, it is. But he, uh, he influenced your garden in, in many ways, uh, not just in the frame. Well, <laughs> speaking of inside the box, there's outside the box being camel topiaries, could be a monkey hanging in a tree that's been planted, or a beautiful bird bath that had succulents in it and just updated this year with some glass put in it. Beautiful. That was the new thing this year. So, so Jan would think beyond soil as, as a mulch. I mean, broken Absolutely. glass completely changed the shape of this and the color of it. It did. Well, and what was so neat is Jan taught classes here at Mayflower. Any customer that came in, he would willingly share these new techniques and new ideas with. So we all learned to think uh, from in the frame to out of the box. Yanified. Yanified, yes. Mm -hmm. And this te these techniques and legacy will live on forever. Well, and next up, we'll share his incredible talent with color in containers. As summer heats up, I spend less time in the garden and more time with my two favorite food groups, wine and chocolate. I'm at Mayflower Greenhouse in Green Bay with my favorite gardener, Jan Vos. Hi, Jan. Hi. <laughs> Here's to wine and chocolate. But I understand you have designed an entire lecture series about plants that go with wine and chocolate. What a wonderful idea. Thank you. We also designed those classy glasses because <laughs> it helps uh, when you're gardening. Uh, it's not very clean job, so you need to maintain some class, and this works perfectly. Oh, show After me this. After you're done taking sip, here you go. It oh, fits just about what into a great idea. any pot. And it works. It works beautifully. Uh, right here we <laughs> designed a Chardonnay pot, very refreshing, crisp, uh, crisp. Gold. yes, here you go, <laughs> okay. here you go. And as usual, thriller, filler, spiller. Okay, that's the thriller, element of design. Exactly. It means tallest, uh, medium, and uh, trailing Something uh, coming, uh, out the front. coming out of the pot. Uh, as a thriller works, uh, Dinkotiana Langsdorfi, those beautiful chartreuse flowers, a little bit later, millet will help. This Lysimachia uh, Golden Alexander, you have a chart right here that is also so kind of... So edible too. Absolutely. Uh, golden, I mean, the golden uh, painted tank. Uh, this, yes, I knew you would ask I about it. Salvia. It's a salvia flame. Uh, a little bit later, we'll, we'll, we'll add entirely different dimension to it when we'll start blooming really, really nice red. So it will be kind of So it's going to change different. into a different color wine. Yes, so. yes of course. <laughs> we have also Plectrantus here, air plant, uh, plant, plant and uh, of course, uh, perennial um, Vinca illumination. Beautiful, beautiful. As far as uh, main, maintenance goes, really, oh, we forgot about this happy thought geranium. Oh, of course, drinking leaves. wine, you do have a happy thought. So. Oh, yeah, exactly. Or the chocolate. I mean, oh, I don't know which one. Yes, absolutely. And uh, uh, and uh, basically uh, just watering and uh, feeding it once in a while, basically maintenance free. Full sun? Full sun. Okay. Now what about the darker colors, the chocolate plants or the Merlot plants? We have a very, very uh, wide, wide selection, wide range. We could start, for instance, with the chocolate cosmos that is uh, really chocolatey uh, flowers, but it's not blooming yet. It's kind of, this is our last batch and, uh, and it didn't bloom yet. So this would be more for the flowers rather than the foliage. Yes, okay. yes. So Durantemum chocolate looks like oh, silk, like wax, wow. very interesting plant. It's uh, different dimension to just about any container. Yeah. Of course, chocolate ruffles, hookra, uh, sun. Most people believe that it's, it's really for, for shade, yeah. but works really very nice in a semi-shade to full sun. Really? Okay. Besides, in a planter, in a container, it will be kind of slightly shaded, so, so it will work very nice. Well, let's plant this, shall we? Uh, let's plant it, let's say, dry uh, in a sense that we'll just put pot together. We'll start with okay. the same ruby uh, banana. Oh, look at the foliage there. Now, that's a, that's a Merlot, definitely. Very much so. Uh, here you go. This is another Merlot, Cordeline, a red okay. sensation. Now, we leave them in the pot, so if we change our mind, we can, we can, we can move them around. around. And uh, this would be another, I don't know what kind of wine would it be, but, but it's <laughs> really, really wine. very interesting. Uh, that is stunning. Libertia. And now we can, we can use those, those right here, those, okay. those uh, pseudorandom chocolate. And uh, we can uh, add, or maybe even right there, we can add this. See, that's where it's this, good to rearrange again. Yeah, yeah, we can add this coleus that kind of 
echo uh, banana. So even though we're doing, you know, Merlot and chocolate, you need different colors of foliage in there. Yes, otherwise it would be probably a little bit too dark, too, too whiny, too Merlot. Monochro monochromatic. Yes, yes. Okay. And uh, many plants would probably lose their texture and, uh, and uh, they would disappear. Uh, you also work on the contrast. Look, those are kind of blades uh, looking leaves and this has very ruffle, ruffle uh, leaves and uh, right there you have a contrast and, uh, and a very different look. So texture, it's not just color, it's texture, it's leaf patterns, it's mm -hmm. leaf shapes. Too. Yes, okay. yes. So like right. this is very glossy and a completely different leaf. Uh, different leaves and yet it has a, has a basically all colors that we already oh, included yeah. here. Yeah. This is Coprosma Sunset and it's really a very interesting plant. This oh, is yeah. another one. Uh, we can add here, but it's too much, so why don't we basically add it right there? Here you go. Looks and we're not relying on flowers almost anywhere here. It's all foliage. Well, let's say we, this is your oh, favorite. One. Yes, I do like those. <laughs> Jewels of Opar, uh, Shelley's favorite uh, plant. That's one of my favorites. That's yes. beautiful, yeah. And it's, it, look how nice it looks against the rest of it. The contrast again, yeah. Yes. We done. We basically done with the fillers. Like so right now thriller. we'll be working thriller. This would be thriller as well, okay. and then those will be fillers, and we're working on the spillers. Uh, this is Axalis, Zinfandel, name of Beautiful. the variety. Beautiful, yeah, Zinfandel is perfect. <laughs> yes, and uh, this is uh, right Ooh, here, it's, uh, it's a, a raspberry plum uh, alternantra, Joseph's coat. Look at those little nice variegations. It, so it, it might be a rosé. <laughs> uh, yes, yes, very much so. We can add right here. Oh, beautiful. And, and so it's now we could be done or we could rearrange we because we've be, dry planted it. Yes, we could be done or we could rearrange it. Right here we could add also this, this ornamental pepper uh, that at fall it will be really uh, the dark dark looking uh, fruits. Now we're, this is go. the back of the plant, so the top, the high part, and then sliding down to the front here. And this, this, is the way, this is the way it looks when it's done, wow. done planting. Look at this. And this would be full sun, even though we've got dark foliage in this here. This would be full sun. See, we may, people asking, uh, is it all right? that dark foliage plants will be in the full sun. Yes, that's really no problem because somehow they, they withstand uh, really full sun royally and that, that's no problem. That's Jan, what a wonderful way to enjoy wine and chocolate. Thank you. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> You're entirely welcome. Thanks. You know, of all the things Jan did in that segment, I think what he did with the wine glasses was my favorite part. I am with the Mayflower production manager, Janusz Kuzma. And Janusz, you've worked for Jan 14 years and the wonderful part is you're going to stay on with Mayflower Greenhouse now. Yes, I'm going to stay on. Uh, we have a new owners, but they're willing to uh, continue on Jan's legacy and they're willing to go in the same direction Jan, Jan was going. So it's not just you who are staying on? No, it's not just me. Uh, actually, the whole crew is staying, wow. which is great. It's going to make it much easier for us to continue doing what Jan started to do. So all of you learned from Jan for many years, so that talent and that skill is still here. Yes, and it's going to stay here. <laughs> good, good. Well, let's talk also about um, how Jan used this greenhouse. It wasn't just for growing things. No, it wasn't. It was actually a gathering place. We also use it for uh, some charity dinners, and it was also a place for uh, some wild parties. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was here for a few of that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but he also used this place kind of as a gathering place for the Polish community. Yeah, Jan was uh, like a glue for the Polish community. He was the person that kept all the Polish community together. And families, yeah, family friendly was important to Jan too. Yeah, it was. Um, he wanted to bring a young generation into the gardening. Um, last year we built up the uh, chicken coop and uh, we do have a eight hens and a rooster. Uh, we also have a greenhouse cat named Felix and he's very children friendly. friendly. Very friendly, yeah. yeah. And Jan's sense of humor kind of shows up with the chickens. One of those chickens was named after <clears throat> somebody. Yeah, he named one of them Shelly. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jan. <laughs> yep. But actually, I should say thanks, Jan. The, th the world he created here through all of you is going to stay. Yes. We'll make sure it's, go it's going to stay here. Thank you. Thank you. Mayflower Greenhouse has been purchased by John Cress and Chris Pino. Because of them and all of Jan's employees, junk will continue to be planted, as will picture frames. Jan's legacy will live on. For me, one of the many joys of coming to Mayflower to visit, whether for work or for fun, were the many wonderful meals, Polish meals, that Jan cooked for us. Lunch was never just lunch with Jan. Lunch always became a party, shared with his employees, friends, and whoever stopped by. We will share some of Jan's recipes on our website, including my favorite, white borscht. 
We will also have a list of all of the episodes of The Wisconsin Gardener that Jan appeared on, on our website. You can find those by going to WPT.org, then click on The Wisconsin Gardener. In case you can't tell by now, Jan was more than just a very special guest on The Wisconsin Gardener. He was my very dear friend. Dozo Bakchenya Panovnia. Until we meet again, Jan. I'm Shelley Ryan. Thanks for joining all of us on this special edition of The Wisconsin Gardener. Funding for the Wisconsin Gardener is provided in part by the Wisconsin Master Gardener Association.